So today we're gonna make a cozy miso baked chicken tender with a hot and spicy mustard sauce. The idea for this really was that when you put miso on just about anything, it gives this incredible, slightly sweet, slightly nutty, slight, you know, a little bit fermented. So there's this interesting thing your mouth doesn't know what to do with, um, a layer of flavor that is gorgeous. The other really nice thing about miso is because it is so flavor packed, you can leave everything else a little bit lighter and still get this really hedonistic experience, which sort of seems to be what I love. So I'm gonna show you how to make these otherwise pretty light chicken tenders. We're using gluten-free panko breadcrumbs today. You can use regular panko, um, whole wheat panko. We're gonna use some oat flour as the original dredge for our chicken tenders, um, flavored up with some paprika, which is like my chicken must have, some garlic powder, some onion powder. And then I'm gonna throw some sesame seeds in too for a little extra nutty crunch. It's delightful. And um, something so simple like this recipe, every layer of it has to have its flavor coming through, which is why the first step is going to be to give our panko breadcrumbs a little extra toasting experience in the oven. So I'm just gonna pour them onto a baking sheet, spread them out like you're sifting for gold, and pop them into a 425 degree oven. Should only take three or four minutes. It will turn a little bit golden brown. It will just begin that browning experience for the chicken tenders, toast up those little breadcrumbs. Um, it is a hot, hot heat for them in there, so don't forget about them. The um, first layer of our mix is going to be this oat flour with our onion powder, garlic powder, and paprika, and a pinch of salt and some pepper. Can I just tell you one of the saddest pieces to me of anything that has the potential to be golden brown, crispy, ultra flavorful, but still light. The thing that drives me craziest when people is when people don't salt enough because you need the salt to feel like it has flavor. So plenty of salt in this dry mix. Another thing to think about is I added those two big teaspoons of salt. Not all of this is gonna get used. The like chicken gets very little dredging in here, so do not be alarmed. Pepper, pepper, pepper. And then at the same time, because I'll be seasoning these up too, I'm gonna crack two eggs, and this will be a quick little egg wash that we do after our dip through the oat flour. And to our eggs, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of white miso. This is a very mellow miso. You could use yellow or red miso if you wanted more of like a punchy fermented flavor. This one is very sweet and mild. Mm. It's, I, there's no sugar in here, but it tastes really sweet and so much flavor. Um, let me just go ahead and give our eggs a quick whisk first and then add our miso in. And I'm just gonna start by kind of forking it into the egg mix. I'm gonna transition to a whisk because I just feel like I'll be working way harder than I need to if I do it with a fork. So my other whisk is dirty. I've got this lovely little number. And you do want to incorporate the eggs in the miso, have this be a smooth egg wash so that every piece of chicken gets a nice coating of that miso flavor. Beautiful, okay. And what I could have done before I did that would have been to whisk together the flour. It's a process everywhere we go. So whisk together your flour and your spices and your salt and pepper so that those are evenly distributed and every bite is going to have lots of flavor. Okay, pinch of salt in with our eggs and some more pepper as well. Give that a quick whisk. Ooh. Okay. And let's check on our breadcrumbs, see how they're coming along. Nice, very nice. Perfect timing. <laughs> Thank goodness we remembered about these guys. Oh yeah, check out that lightness here, but check out the roasted golden browning effect we've got going on. That's what we're talking about. It smells super nutty and delicious. Give it a quick toss and pour it back. Waste not your breadcrumbs.
And to the breadcrumbs, I'm going to add a tablespoon each of black and white sesame seed just to give us a little bit more crunch and texture and a fun little pop of color on your chicken breading. More salt, every layer, I'm telling you, trust the process here. Okay, and now all we need to do is bread each of our chicken tenders. I put a wire rack on top of a sheet tray and that's gonna be what I roast these chicken tenders on because I want the heat circulating 360 degrees on the underside and over top so we get maximum crusting glory. Now it's time for the breading stage. So what I have here is a pack of chicken tenders. They come pre-portioned, ready to go, just like so, which makes them extra easy. I'm just gonna pat dry my individual chicken tenders so that your um, oat flour and then your eggs and then your breadcrumbs adhere fully to the surface and you don't have any slickness happening. One other little thing you can consider doing, not essential, but does kind of make a difference um, just for texture throughout the whole tender is to grab this little kind of white tendon looking thing. And I find it's helpful just to grab it with a paper towel or something that's gonna help you get a good firm grip. Then use a fork to go on either side of it. And depending on how strong your pincer grip is, this is gonna be easy for you, <laughs> but you just have to hold the tendon and hold the fork down and then pull. Out comes this lovely little piece and you are left with a lovely tenderized tender with no uh, none of that sinewy little bit in, left inside which is great again not critical just something that if you're looking to really do it up you can do hmm there you go all right anyway now that you have your tendons good and clean and ready for your breading. Here's what you're gonna do. Quickly wash your hands, just so you can do your moves. I'm gonna grab a little avocado spray. You can definitely use um, olive oil spray here. And just go ahead and spray the grates of the rack that I just set into our um, sheet tray. And that's just gonna make sure that the chicken doesn't stick to it as it's cooking. Then for each chicken piece, we're gonna go first into our lovely oat flour combo with all those delicious spices and the salt and pepper. First step of flavoring, then shake any excess off right into our egg wash. And you can use a different fork at this stage so that you're not getting your mix overly eggy. And then right into our extra crusty, crispy, delicious toasted breadcrumb mix with those sesame seeds in there. And once it is fully coated, layered with texture, we're gonna go right onto our sheet tray and keep working our way through this chicken. One thing I will say, if you are going to do this, make a bunch. I'm telling you, make a whole mess all at once because what you'll do is eat them fresh that day for lunch, dinner, lovely meals, easy snacks, delicious. Um, but they keep really nicely, so you can go ahead and add it into chopped into salads the next day. Um, again, for delicious snacks, it's just a nice thing that once you have this process set up, do yourself a favor and get yourself good and ready for lots of other meals throughout the week. Make sure that every little piece is coated and off we go. So let's talk about each step in the flouring breading process. So first into our oat flour in this case, but frequently all purpose flour. This is going to create a textured surface and also a dry surface that better adheres the egg wash when we go into that next step of the coating process. It does add a little bit of its own flavor. Also, it's gonna be the thing that binds the, sp the seasonings and spices to the chicken really well. But most of all, it does just make sure that the egg has something to hold on to and, and it drinks that egg up and coats it and sticks it to your chicken so you get maximum flavor. And then after our egg and miso flavor boost, which again, gives color, gives flavor, and helps to have everything stick well to the chicken into our extra crunchy, crispy, already slightly golden brown from that toasting process, panko breadcrumbs. And by the way, there's no need to do it all one at a time. I was just making sure you could see the precise process I was following, but do a whole batch all at once. There is no need to be overly precise or um, specific about it. The whole idea is this is supposed to be easy, delicious, nourishing food that you can make fast because it's January and we got a lot to do, but we still want yummy chicken. Just want to give a little spritz of suntan oil to each of your chicken. 
pieces um, just to help them get that really extra golden brown fry going on on the top layer into our 425 degree oven. It should bake maybe 14 minutes, 15 minutes. We're, we'll take one out right about then, cut into it, make sure our chicken is nice and cooked through and that the coating is gorgeous. And then we're going to taste it with our sweet and spicy hot mustard sauce. So if you haven't used miso before, this is what it looks like. It is a fermented paste that um, can be made from a variety of different things, actually soybeans, um, barley, different rice, um, it's a different grain, which develops different flavors. It's super versatile. It can definitely go sweet or savory because it has this wonderful, like salty fermented taste, but also a note of sweetness um, that's very balancing and very rich and so delicious. So in addition to being super delicious, miso also happens to be really good for you. Mm. It's loaded with live enzymes and bacteria because it is a fermented food. Um, minerals, it's supposed to help with digestion. If you're going to buy it at the store, go ahead and look in the refrigerated section. It comes in usually little buckets like so. Just so you have it in your arsenal of delicious things to add a ton of flavor very easily to a whole bunch of different foods and today to chicken tenders. So we have just a few minutes left for the chicken to bake away. Let's make a really quick and delicious sweet and spicy mustard sauce. And because I have some miso, I'm gonna go ahead and add that in too. So about a tablespoon of miso paste going in with, let's start with um, one, two, three, four tablespoons. So a quarter cup of Dijon mustard. You can use yellow mustard if you have that. So I'm using this Coleman's mustard today, which gives like a slightly more sort of horseradishy flavor, which I love. There's just like a bite to it, which I love. But if you wanna go even spicier, go for like a Chinese hot mustard, something delicious like that is glorious in this sauce. Um, a little bit goes a long way here, guys. So. So just load it up. I do really like this sauce a little bit more on the piquant spicy side because it just wakes your taste buds up and it makes it really um, just like a little different than the chicken tenders and ketchup we might be used to having. But I will add a little sweetness, which ketchup usually brings, but in this case, let's go for a tablespoon or so of honey. We can always add a little more and a little hit of um, acidity with some rice wine vinegar, eh, like a tablespoon and a half, plus a pinch of salt, just to keep it well seasoned. And because I'm using that miso paste and I do want it to evenly distribute through the sauce, I'm using a little whisk. Let's give it a taste, see what we're working with. That is really yummy. That is really delicious. I'm glad we added that little bit of miso in. I think it does add a little something special here and thickens the sauce up as well. So it's really gonna be fun to dip into. I wanted a little bit more honey just to bring some of that sweetness out too. Perfect. Our chicken should be done. 425, 15 minutes. Check this out. It's talking to me. Golden brown, juicy, crunchy baked chicken tenders. Let's go ahead and let them rest for one second. And then we'll cut into them and make sure. Oh yeah, they feel good. So let's go ahead and taste one of them, test it, make sure we are fully cooked through. This was the guy that kind of gnarly and fell apart on me. So he's a good one to test. But if you're doing it with a thermometer, you just wanna make sure you take your chicken out just before 165. Um, these aren't going to rest very long, so you're not going to get a lot of residual heat cooking, so you want to take them all the way. But check it out. Look at that juicy, fully cooked, totally opaque flesh. Nice golden brown crisping on the breadcrumbs. Oops. Mmm. Mmm. You know what it tastes like? It has, um, it's just dawning on me now. I'm like, this tastes familiar. If you ever had like a lobster thermidor or something where they crushed Ritz crackers on top, and it has that really like buttery, crackery, crumbly texture on top. Tastes like that, but then with a little miso under note. Oh, let's go ahead and dip the sauce and find out how much miso and mustard play together. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Talk about a child's food transitioning, blossoming into a beautiful adult lunch. That sauce is delicious. Um, 
I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that could be a pretty excellent dressing substitution for like an Asian style chicken salad. Mm -hmm. Miso, of course, a traditional Japanese condiment, the rice wine vinegar, that little note of honey works beautifully too. The chicken in here, guys, is super tender. The other, the, that egg wash we went through, another benefit of it is it really does sort of lock in that hydration. It gives that nice coating, adds tons of flavor, and then locks in the moisture. So we get juicy chicken, crispy, crumbly topping, decadent, flavorful sauce, talking with our mouthful, which is a side effect of this dish. Mm. And just... As you're lifting it off, go ahead and wiggle a little spatula underneath, but because we did go ahead and grease the grate before we put them down, they should come off nice and easily. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, look at this tower of tender. The tower of tender. It's my favorite ride. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys, that's what it happens. That's what such beautiful chicken tenders do to me. And then if you want to just go, I mean, I actually, I'm a big fan of like the rusticity of this. I like to do just like a big, beautiful saucy bowl, a lovely tower of tender and go to town.